Hey there, welcome back to Handmade with Holly. My name is Holly Michelson, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Del Mar, New York, just outside of Albany. I have been in my craft room all day today. It's dreary and raining again this weekend, and my husband's been at work all day, so it was a great opportunity for me to stamp. Part of what I did today was I designed and created these beautiful Z-Fold cards. And so I thought I would film a video and show you how to do this simple fun fold. They call it a Z-Fold because when you open it, it looks like the letter Z. So you can see both of those right there. Today, we're going to make this project using the prized peony bundle, but I thought I'd show you a little bit about the products that I used before we go ahead and get started. So this first card I made using the Painted Poppies bundle and also the Peaceful Moments Sentiments. When these two stamp sets were designed, they were designed to coordinate. So this first stamp set only has images and the second one only has sentiments. That allows us to have lots of variations on the poppy theme. We have individual poppies, groups of poppies, leaves, and it also allows us to have a whole variety of sentiments, everything from birthday, sympathy, thank you, congratulations, and friendship cards. There's also this great stamp here, Always Remember, um, since the poppy is a symbol for Armistice Day in November. You've got that great sentiment for that. In addition, there are dyes that coordinate, and I use this poppy flower die and I also use the two different leaf dies to cut out the leaves. Lately I've used these two sentiment labels a great deal. Um, they're really great for, you could make a little scene on this larger one, but they're great for sentiments and I love this circle. I like to make like a little ocean scene or a little floral scene in the center of that for cards. I also use the prized peony bundle and I use this gorgeous stamp here to make our focal flower and there's a matching die that cuts that out which was super handy. This die set actually comes with a tremendous number of dies and you actually have all the parts of a peony flower where you can make a three-dimensional peony. Today though I wanted to show the Stampin' Blends, and so we, I used this one. Now, for the designer series paper, over here I used some retired paper called Peaceful Poppies. This paper just recently retired, um, but if you're like me, you probably picked some up when it was on sale, and you probably have plenty of this in your stash. And I used Poppy Parade and Old Olive Stampin' Blends in order to color in the leaves and the poppy flower. For this card, I used the new in colors, Soft Succulent and Polished Pink. And um, again, use Stampin' Blends and, and we'll color that in together today. This designer series paper that we used right here is from a package called Pattern Party. Pattern Party is a new set of designer series paper just released in May that's only available exclusively to party hosts. So if you host a Stampin' Up! party with your Stampin' Rewards, you can purchase this paper. It's a gigantic pack of paper, actually. Um, they're 12 by 12 sheets of paper, and you get 48 sheets of paper for $18 worth of Stampin' Rewards. And this isn't even all of the paper. I just tried to grab a few pieces and give you a flavor of the beautiful colors and variety of patterns. This one down here with these gorgeous floral blooms. Oh my gosh. Rainbows, um, hearts, all sorts of lovely things. Polka dots. And this is my favorite. I think it looks like turtle shells and I keep using it with the new Turtle Friends stamp set. On the back side of this paper, you've got some gorgeous neutral patterns um, for black and white cards. Uh, I think my favorite here is perhaps this buffalo check. So lots of great options in that paper. Again, available 
as Stampin' Rewards for anybody who hosts a party uh, between now and um, the end of the annual catalog, which will end the first week of May in 2022. Okay. So for supplies that we're going to need today, we obviously need the prize peony stamp set and matching dies. We're gonna need the Pattern Party Designer Series paper, but if you don't have that, um, you could also substitute the 2021-2023 in color designer series paper. Um, this sheet would work great. Might even flip it over and use that, but this is also soft succulent. So that's another great option. And um, certainly I'm sure there's other paper that could easily be made to work for this card as well. So, we're going to need a half sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I simply cut it at the five and a half inch mark. This is basic black, and I'm gonna use this for the card base. Um, and don't worry about the measurements. While I'll tell you about them now, I will put them all in the comments for the video. You'll need your piece of designer series paper. This measures one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. And we're gonna put that right there. You'll need a small piece of soft succulent. I cut a piece that was three and a half by five, and then from that piece of paper, I used the die to cut out my scallop rectangle. And then you'll probably want to have a full sheet of basic white cardstock because we're going to need to cut the large scallop rectangle. Um, a smaller one, the smallest one, and we're also still gonna need a piece of paper to stamp our peony that we're gonna cut out. So I recommend just having a full sheet of basic white on hand. Lastly, we're also gonna need the dies that allow us to cut these scalloped rectangles. So that die set is called the Scallop Contour Dies, and you get a wide variety of nested scalloped rectangles, and you get this nice edgelet die, which allows you to cut a scalloped edge on the side of your paper. For today, we used all but this these dies. So I, we're going to use all four of these in our project today. But before we move on, I do want to point this one out. Even though I couldn't find a way to work it into the project, I'm a big fan of this die. Look how cool this is. When you cut out your rectangle, it actually creates slits in the paper where you could maybe weave ribbon through your rectangle before attaching this to your project. Plus, not only do you get the scallops, but you get these fun little dots in the corner. So that's gonna be a fun die to use on my next project. Now, in the interest of time, I have already cut out these shapes as I showed you. That'll just save us a little bit of time on the video. I will stamp and cut out the peony though together with you today. All right, so I think we're ready to get started. I'm gonna just go ahead and set this off in the corner so we can take a look at it. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to prepare our card base by scoring our card stock. So this again is a half sheet of eight and a half by 11 card stock. And I'm gonna put it into my paper trimmer, um, what is now horizontal now that I've cut it in half. I'm going to put it in horizontal and we're going to score this twice. So first we're going to score it at two and an eighth and this is what's going to allow us to fold the card back to make the Z fold. And we're also going to score this at four and a quarter. Now four and a quarter is where you normally score a standard card base. So that's what's going to make the card fold in half. So now that we have our card base, I don't know if you can see those two score marks right there, we're going to go ahead and fold the card in the center and use our bone folder to burnish the card so that we get a good flat seam that's going to help the card stay closed. And now, and, and so what I've just done there is what you're used to doing for most of the cards you make. 
The trick to this fold is this extra score line and the fact that we're going to fold this backward on itself. And so this is how we get that Z fold. So can you see the Z? All right, so now our card base is prepared and we're gonna go ahead and bring in our inside matting layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run adhesive around the edges. You can use um, snail, I'm still finishing up my snail stash. Or if you have the new stamp and seal, this would work great. Or you could use the Tombow multi-liquid glue. And uh, the benefit of using this is that if you need to reposition your piece, um, you'll be able to move it around a little bit. But I just eyeball it and make sure I have roughly the same amount on all my edges. And I'm gonna go ahead and press that down. So you can see how that's coming together. Now, I like to do this first because it helps me determine the placement of where to put the next, uh, or to put the soft succulent piece. So we're also going to run adhesive onto the back of our designer series paper. Again, visually looking for center so that we're leaving a nice even border around all four sides. And then we're ready for the piece of soft succulent. Now, see how I said that it's a lot easier to place this piece after you've already put the white piece down first. You can eyeball where it needs to go. Before we put the adhesive though on it, I wanna also show you that this piece is gonna hang over the edge when the card folds, right? So we wanna be sure that when we're putting adhesive on this card, we're only putting adhesive here and that we don't put any adhesive over here on this side or it'll be hanging out and it's gonna stick our front down to the white piece and we don't want that. So I'm gonna use my fingers, I'm gonna hold my fingers on the side of the card where I want the adhesive and flip it over. And then I know that my adhesive needs to go on this side. So now we're gonna go ahead and use that white piece again to visually line this up, trying to be sure that we leave some white, equal white space top, bottom, and to the right. And then we're gonna go ahead and press this down. So at this point, we can go ahead and put snail on our white. So I just put more adhesive on the white scalloped rectangle and I'm going to go ahead and place this down again visually centering it. And I'm going to give that a good press. So now we have the card base and we're ready to start doing some of the detail work and the stamping. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside for just a moment. Okay, so now we need our square piece of basic white. I cut this to three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And we're gonna need our Memento Tuxedo black ink and we're gonna bring in our first stamp. So this is the large focal image from the prized peony stamp set. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up. Whenever I'm working with large stamps like this, I like to put the stamp down flat on a surface and then press my ink pad onto the stamp. That way I can move it around and make sure that I have good, even coverage. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and center it over my cardstock and give it a press. You might have heard my chair squeak. I actually just stood up to try to put my full body weight behind that. And I like to really run my hand and add pressure over large stamps like this, make sure I get a really good impression. And even by leaving the stamp on the paper for a few seconds, it gives it time for the ink to transfer. 
got a really beautiful impression there. I'm not quite excited about that. And now I'm gonna bring in the Stampin' Chamois so that I can clean off our stamp. So if you haven't seen this, this is just the Stampin' Chamois. It's basically a chamois cloth that is wet right now, which allows me to, uh, I can, it's very pliable since it's wet. And just simply rub your stamp along the chamois. No need for chemicals or anything to clean it off, which is great. Okay, so now that we've stamped our peony, I'm gonna let that sit for just a moment before we start to color, and I'm gonna use this time to stamp our sentiments. I'm gonna do my stamping today using the new In Color Soft Succulent. And uh, this sentiment, love and thanks to a dear friend, fits perfectly on this dotted uh, scalloped rectangle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and ink that up. Notice since this is a smaller stamp, I just dipped my stamp into the ink pad, whereas with the peony flower being so large, I tapped my ink pad onto the peony. So I'm just gonna visually eyeball it. Hopefully my head doesn't get in the camera here and try to center my sentiment over the rectangle. Now well, I'm just a smidge to the left, but we're gonna leave it as is for the sake of time. And just cleaning off my stamp here again. And now we also have to stamp our inside sentiment. I stamped your sweet friendship refreshes the soul. So we'll do that again. And I have that stamp right here. Now, you want to be mindful of where the soft succulent cardstock will cover the sentiment. You would not want it to be visible from the outside. So be sure that you don't get too close to the right edge when you're stamping. Um, but we've got this wide area from our soft succulent rectangle, so I think we're going to be fine if we visually center our sentiment. Great. Just slightly crooked. Uh, I have my work surface on an angle for the camera and uh, it's making me stamp a little crooked today. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and now we can go ahead and begin work on our peony flower. Okay. So in order to color our peony flower, we're going to use the light polished pink and the dark polished pink, as well as the light and dark soft succulent. I just started a moment ago accidentally with flirty flamingo, but we'll cover that up, not to worry. So I'm gonna go over that with the light. And what I tend to do is color everything with the light color first, and then come back in and shade with the darker color. So I apologize, this may take a moment for me to do this. Now I'm gonna come in with the darker tone and I'm gonna go over edges, I'm gonna go over places where there is some black ink. I'm trying to add some tone and shading to the flower. So we don't wanna color in the peony solid with the darker color. We're just trying to add variation so that we can create depth and dimension. It's really thundering outside. Hopefully you can't hear that. I 
love to color with my Stampin' Blends. For me, this is very relaxing. It's very peaceful, cathartic, kind of mellow out. Just gonna come back in and add a little bit more color in places where I think it could use it. And just trying to create tone and highlights in the flower. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing with the leaves and we're gonna start with the light soft succulent. I'm gonna use the small side here for this tiny leaf and for this small leaf. and also to get into the stem. Now we're gonna to switch to the brush side and we're gonna color in the leaves with the light soft succulent. And you'll notice that as I've been coloring, I'm not picking up any of this memento black ink onto my marker tips. And that's because I gave it a few minutes to dry after we stamped it. Remember we stamped it and then we um, worked on some other things before we started to color. Now, the other thing you wanna be thinking about when you're using your blends is being protective of your tips. This side is pretty sturdy, this bullet side for writing and smaller work, but the other side is a brush side and it's fragile. So you, you don't wanna put a lot of hard pressure on your points. You, um, you'll notice I often kind of color using the side of the marker and protect the point. I'm gonna use the bullet side though with my dark soft succulent and I'm gonna go over these black marks on the stamp and try to add some shading. So I'm going over the veins and the leaves and places where there's a little highlight. Just adding some depth to the color and helping to make the flower look, or in this case the leaf, more three-dimensional. And sometimes I'll add a little bit to edges and try to add some three dimension to it. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, now we're done with our blends. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine and we're gonna use this to cut our peony die. We're gonna to need to make our sandwich. The sandwich begins with the number one plate. And if you forget, there are directions printed right on your plate. So you always have a handy reminder. Then we're gonna need a number two plate. You can see mine's all scratched and cut up. It's well loved. You're gonna place your paper. Then you're gonna place your cutting die. Now we're going to, I need to set it down just to get my die properly lined up with the peony flower. And when I think I have that just perfect, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in some post-it notes to hold this die, whoops, I just shifted it. I'm gonna go ahead and use these post-it notes to keep the die in place while it's running through the machine. Now, uh, Stampin' Up! is working on a magnetic plate for thin dyes, but it is not yet available in July of 2021. So, uh, oh, and sorry, once I finished putting the post-it notes on, I placed my second number two plate on top to finish my sandwich. I'm gonna go ahead and run this through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. This is the mini version and so we call it the mini boss. And I am at an awkward angle trying to keep myself off camera so that, sorry about that. Normally it cranks much easier. Okay. 
So there we go, one pass, cut out our peony flower. We've got a few extra pieces of waste here. Um, so now let's go ahead and bring our card back in. And we need to adhere our peony flower onto the background. And we're also going to think about placement for our sentiment label. Um, and you'll notice on this one, I used ribbon. So I have this polished pink uh, open weave ribbon and it's really beautiful and nice and soft. And this is a perfect match for the polished pink Stampin' Blends that we just used. But I also really wanna offset this label and add another little pop of pink. So I'm going to bring in my sponge dauber. This one's dedicated to polished pink and open up my polished pink Stampin' Pad. And I'm basically just gonna tap my dauber into the pad and then rub it along the edge of my die just to add a little color there and make the white label stand out better against the white background. So you can add as much or as little as suits your taste. I just want a hint to really outline it and make it stand out. I think I like that. All right, so we, we want to think about our placement, like I said, and I'm going to go ahead and arrange that. I have the option of adding the ribbon again, like I did last time or I could skip the ribbon and instead bring in these in color jewels. Um, there's a, some lovely polished pink jewels in here, so I might think about using those instead of the ribbon, or I could even use both. I'm gonna go ahead and use my take your pick tool to remove this gem from the backing and place it onto my project. I think maybe about there. We'll take another one and place that down here. Okay. And in this case, I did not use dimensionals to pop up the peony. The card itself already has some heft with the Z fold, and I've got quite a few layers here. So in the interest of thinking about economical postage and trying to keep this at a first class stamp, I'm gonna forego dimensionals, and I'm gonna go straight flat down with snail or stamp and seal. I think it makes more sense to layer the peony flower first. You'll notice here on the reverse side of my peony that the alcohol markers do bleed through. Um, so that's something to consider when you're planning a project. For instance, we wouldn't have wanted this peony flower to be hanging over and be visible on the back because then you would see the alcohol markers. Go ahead and line that up there. And now for the sentiment label, this die perfectly matches the same scallop rectangle from the smaller die right here. So in other words, these nest together perfectly, these two dies. So I'm lining up my sentiment exactly with that white scallop rectangle underneath, which really does give the sentiment a little bit of three-dimensionality without actually using dimensionals. Okay, there you have it. We're now finished with our Z-fold card. It was very easy and went together quickly. Of course, a little of that is because I did pre-cut our scalloped rectangles. Again, as a reminder, we did slightly different decorations on our card. On this first card, we used the 
beautiful polished pink ribbon. And on the second card, we used our in color gems. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in our poppy card so we can see the difference. On this poppy card, I used the Peaceful Poppy sequins. These are also retired, uh, but those were on the clearance rack before they went away and maybe have some in your stash still. It was also a great way to add a little bit of pizzazz to my card. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up. That helps me get higher in the search results on YouTube. And I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell. That way you can be notified each time I upload a new video. If you'd like to purchase any of these products, please go ahead and leave a comment and reach out to me or look for my email address in the notes. You can also go to stampinup.com and search for me as your demonstrator. Again, my name is Holly Michelson from Delmar, New York. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd be honored to become yours. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you joining me. Until next time.